Hey everybody, today we have ourselves an absolutely fantastic project. I am so excited for this project. It's been a lot of work leading up to it, getting everything orchestrated, getting everything permitted and everything ready with the city and that kind of thing. But it is finally the day. We are gonna use a big old 40,000 pound excavator to smash an entire house. Here's our setup. We got this big old rental machine. I got that thing hauled in on a semi here and we're gonna get busy here in just a moment. I've done lots of demo for other contractors when I work for other people and I've also done a few of my own smaller projects. This isn't the first house, but this is probably the biggest house I've done. And so I'm gonna do my best to give you guys kind of a how-to because it's not as simple as just smashing a building. There's kind of a strategy to it. The first part of the strategy, of course, is always the first, just knocking in the front door. Wow, it's stronger than I thought it would be. There we go. So an important thing to consider when you're just getting started here is that you want to be pushing everything into the house. We don't want to make this mess bigger than it is because, or bigger than it has to be because we don't want to find ourselves picking up a bunch of debris around the outside. Especially a day like today, a rainy day in winter in Ohio, it's just not fun to be picking up debris that's covered in snow and all kinds of stuff. The corners are typically the strongest, as you can see. So we gotta work our walls in a little bit on each side of this one. The starting point on a house is often determined by the access to the house. This is the biggest, most exposed corner for this house, and so it's therefore the easiest to get started on. Ah, even once we've compromised, the this corner is still the strongest part. That's always amazing. important that as we go along here we want to try and kind of break things up as we tear them down. Once debris is knocked off the house it's rather difficult to get it to be smaller. You can kind of crunch it up a little bit with the thumb but it can still be a challenge so we try to rip it off in smaller pieces and not try to knock in whole walls and that kind of thing. We want to take little bites. It is tempting though to take big old bites and just knock the whole house down in like two minutes. I broke through the floor there in the first floor and I'm knocking the stuff down to the basement so I've got something substantial to crush against. It is also important to keep in mind when you're pushing into a, a cavity like this to keep that bucket cylinder protected. We don't want to lift up into an upper part of the house and accidentally wreck that cylinder on something. See if we can pull this porch roof on into this project here without getting it out in the yard. There we go, we got most of it in there. Sometimes it's important to keep materials separate. We'll be hauling the wood off and it'll go to a special debris site for wooden uh, products and just house demolition materials, but the concrete and masonry products can be recycled, crushed up and used uh, 
for building new buildings and driveways and things like that. So that's why I don't knock those pillars from the front porch in with the rest of the material. I try to keep those separate and keep them sorted. As we're getting along here, I just always think it's neat to observe a house when it's like partially taken apart. Like, this is an upstairs bedroom, all paneled in nice knotty pine. This was a downstairs bedroom, had some nice wood baseboards and some wallpaper, or at least it was nice once upon a time. Unfortunately, this house was lived in by coons for the last uh, 10 or 15 years, and they kind of ruined the place. ourselves to a spot where this roof is pretty much unsupported and so we're gonna kind of have to tear it down in one big piece I suspect Okay, now we got ourselves a piece that's kind of teetering over the remaining walls. We'll make sure we find a way to pull that in and not let it fall off the other side. There we go. Very nice. And then this is set up really nice and we can just kind of strip it down here. Crunch everything up as we go. Houses that are built out of dimensional lumber are much, much easier to crunch up and get into small pieces than houses that are built out of OSB and plywood sheathing. That's much harder to break up. All right, here's the remaining front corner. We can pull it pull it into the house. All right, here's the final front corner. We really don't want this to go away from us. So we want to make sure we pull it in, and when we take the corner away, we're gonna take away a lot of structural integrity from that other side. So we kinda of wanna nibble away at it here. Nice and careful like. goodness I can't reach it I'm gonna go forward just a little bit there we go now we can reach it we'll pull it in kind of hoping it would all come in one piece it's not that's okay we can work with it I'm 
gonna take a few minutes to go ahead and munch this up before we get too carried away and get too much of it down and it's too hard to munch up. We've been at this for about an hour and a half or so now and uh, we're at a point where we're about halfway. I think the chimney is about halfway through the house. You can see it there and there's a little bit of an extra bathroom on the back but that's probably similar to the porch being on the front so if that gives anybody a time reference of how things are going it's pretty quick. Now I want to talk to you real quick about this corner here. I want to keep working this part of the house down on this side and I could just come in here and push on it really hard and get it to all fold in but it'll come down easier if I destroy the roof above it first. And the reason for that is simply that the roof and the wall make a corner and again the corners are the strongest and so if we can get that out of the way we can push the wall in pretty easy and it'll come down easier and be more likely to fall into the building and not buckle and push the outside of the building. So there's also some interior walls in here in the second floor that's also going to break out just like that and those will also make it easier to push this wall in. All right, I got the roof all pushed in and got that second story kind of messed up a little bit. We can go ahead and push this corner in. Ah! And lo and behold, it still flung some stuff back out at us, but maybe it wasn't as bad as if we had done a little perfect. up on time to where they're going to come and get the dumpster before too long so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this debris and start filling it. Normally I try to get the dumpster as close as possible to the house or the debris so that way you don't have to worry about dropping stuff. Uh, didn't really have that option on this particular job site just because of the layout of things so I got to swing 180 and try not to dribble any more than necessary because we have to clean it up. I don't want to make more work for us. So we'll sprinkle this in here, nice and gentle. Come on. There we go. And every couple scoops, we'll pack it down just a little bit, and rearrange it, and make sure it's pushed into the corners. That way we get as much in here as possible. It's super important that this stuff be crunched up nice and small like I've been crunching it primarily because it takes up less space and fits in the dumpsters. If stuff is not crunched up real small you end up with big pieces of plywood or boards or even structural components like beams and stuff that end up bridging real bad in the dumpster and causing it to be full of airspace. and since we're paying for the dumpsters to be hauled away we don't want to have a bunch of airspace in there. We got our first dumpster full and they've come to pick it up with the truck. Just like that, he's ready to roll. While that driver is dropping me off a new dumpster, I am going to try and sneak some of these appliances out of here. I want to separate the appliances to save us room in the demolition dumpsters. I also don't think they'll actually take them in the demolition dumpsters, but either way, it's just easier to separate them and throw them in a dump truck and take them to the scrapyard later. Also get ourselves a little lunch money by scrapping them. I think uh, there's a washer and dryer in the basement here, but I think we'll wait until we can get closer to it. So I thought about pulling those out ahead of time so we didn't tear them up or you know risk getting them lost in the debris, but I decided it was easier to just kind of wait until we made a big front door on the house before I uh, 
tried to wiggle them out through the regular front door. Next thing on the list is a kitchen sink. Turns out the cabinetry in this kitchen is also steel, so we'll try and separate that out. Oopsie. When you're moving furniture this way, a little mistake does a little bit more than leave a scratch on the wall. Drop it in here, sort some things out, pick up only the metal piece, we'll add it to our collection. We got our new dumpster, so I'm going to put this carpet in the bottom of the dumpster. That way we don't have to worry about it being fluffy on top or something like that, because that can turn into a challenge. Isn't that just a delightful sight? Almost looks like it'd be some like crazy sea creature or something. I think there's even burlap in there. Maybe that's just the, the backing. Probably just the backing. I don't know how carpet's made. All right, we're at a point where we gotta deal with this chimney. It's exposed enough and it's kind of unstable and I don't want it to fall over and fall outside the house and either hit something that it shouldn't hit or make a mess. So it would be the most ideal thing if we could actually take it down and you know separate the bricks so that way we didn't have to pay to have them hauled away in the dumpster. But that's just not an option because of the nature of the situation. The chimney is taller than the house is wide, and so no matter which way it falls, if it comes down in one piece, it's going to fall outside the house. It's also a hazard because it's within reach of the machine. So we're gonna nibble it down here in a few little pieces, and we're gonna let the bricks mix, it, mix in with the debris, and we're gonna haul it out with the debris. That's a bigger piece than I wanted, uh-oh. <laughs> Well, sometimes it's gonna be what it's gonna be, I guess. Oh boy. At least it landed on the front porch and the deck and not in the dirt, so I can scrape that off fairly easy. That's nice, that's way nicer than having to sort it and separate it out of the dirt. This does make the debris a little heavier and some dumpster companies charge by uh, weight, at least if you go overweight on a certain amount on the dumpster. The company I'm using is very reasonable and uh, they don't charge too much for overweight. Um, I do want to respect their parameters though and not make the dumpsters too heavy because if they're too heavy it's overloading the trucks and that puts everybody at risk, people on the road and everything. So we'll mix this in. That's enough to make the chimney safe. Um, so we won't mix any more in right now. We'll try to get the rest into another dumpster or separate it completely later. Alrighty gang, we've got the house pretty much hollowed out and now we're at a point where we start running the risk of it all falling down all at once because there's not gonna be enough to hold it up. Again, the last thing you'll have standing most of the time is a corner. And when you eliminate one of two walls, you eliminate the corner. And that's when everything wants to fall. So we want it to fall towards the front of the house here. We just gotta be careful that we do it in a controlled fashion as much as possible. We don't endanger ourselves or the machine. We also don't want to make a big mess. So let's see if we can get all the fall and fall in here. Nibble away at the far side. Oh, yep, already making a mess. That one landed outside. This little bay window is a little bit of a challenge to reach. Okay, as I pull it off, there's a chance the roof might collapse. So let's back up a little bit here. So I'll reach out there as far as I can and just pull it towards us. Wow, I can't believe that thing is holding itself up. <laughs> That's incredible. Let's deal with this mess we made on the floor here, get it out of the way so it doesn't just get buried and therefore make it harder to crush up. There we go, recovered. 
little bit that we lost over there. gonna try pulling down on this now. It would be our preference that it came down in little pieces, but I kind of don't think it's going to. Yeah, it came down in one big piece. <laughs> that was sweet. break this stuff up and then we'll do the same thing with what's remaining in there. There's still a bathroom attached to one half of this, but the staircase is right underneath my bucket here, and so I'm thinking that might try to come as one piece. That was awesome. Yep, and there's the bathroom. What remains of it? So go ahead and break this up and we'll smash that too. That's all done. Now we're on to pulling the bathroom in. So I can't reach it from outside the building here. All I can do is reach that awning and if I hit that, it's just gonna fall off of there. What I really would like is for this whole structure to come into the basement in one piece. So that'll help keep the mess localized to the basement where it's easy to clean out with the machine. So to get over there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive out on my trash pile here. And that should be functional in two ways. It'll get us closer, but it'll also kind of break stuff up. Although I've already got it broke up so much, I don't think it's breaking up anymore. It's pretty standard to drive out on a debris pile for a house demolition, just because you can't reach it all. I kind of been trying to avoid it because it also tends to fill up the tracks with debris, and just make a mess out of things. But it turns out it's gonna be necessary for this. At least it's easier than driving the machine all the way around the building with the different piles I have made for scrap and that kind of thing. So let's see if we can grab this. Stick all the way out. Kind of twist in. It looks like it wants to come. It came apart more than I wanted to, but I think that was still the right thing to do. There's a little patio back here. It's plenty easy to scrape off. There's the bathroom mirror. I should be able to pull this the rest of the way in. Actually, you no, know I'm going to break this stuff up underneath here first, because if you get too much piled up, it gets kind of hard to break it up easy. Last little bit, coming down. Ah, come on, Betsy. Come to me. cast iron tub? Maybe we can scrap that. Nope, it's just fiberglass. Oh wait, no, that is cast iron. Very nice. 
see if we can grab the floor here and pull the rest of it in. Nope. Oh, my goodness. That's gross. I don't even know what it is, but don't look fun. Ow. All that and that, this wall was too rotten and slid off the back a little bit. Oh, that's okay. Can't win them all. We'll drag it up over here. This whole bathroom had the ceiling collapsed in and the roof was gaping open, so everything was a little bit rotten. A little less capable of holding up in one piece. Grab that aluminum real quick. There we go, we can toss this over to the side and put it in our aluminum pile for recycling later. Or just a matter of breaking this stuff up. We got all that down and pulled into the hole, just gonna break it up and then we just gotta load everything out. Well, there we have it. Got everything all loaded out, everything all cleaned out. I got down in there with a the shovel and a rake and cleaned out all the corners and everything so there's no more demolition materials in the basement. Got them all loaded up in a dumpster behind me uh, to be hauled away. Now we just gotta break up the floor so that way water can flow through it and break up the walls so that way if anybody's ever digging in this area again, it's not a big deal. Uh, they don't find some big chunks of concrete that they can't easily dig through and stuff like that because that would be a pain for somebody later down the road and we don't want to make problems for other people hit that like button if you think this video earned it and also if you like this kind of content don't be afraid to subscribe both those things help this channel a lot and really encourage youtube to put the videos out there for other people to see i had a lot of fun on this project i hope you did too we'll see you next time